Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our God in heaven, we thank you for this worship service. Thank you, Lord, because of the strength you give us in the inner man. And thank you, Lord, because of the call you give unto us. And you raise up the standard before us, the standard of life, the standard of holiness and righteousness, and the standard of the teaching of your word that you hold before us every time. And you grant us the grace and the inner strength to be able to do and to be able to accomplish what you have called us to do and to accomplish. We are asking, O oh Lord, at this time again, as you reveal to us your mind and your way, that your word will be precious to every one of us in Jesus' name, that none of us will count your word as a strange thing, but the word will be something that we delight in, we rejoice in, we accept totally with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, so that, Lord, we will be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Grant us, Lord, understanding in the word, and the heart to be obedient to the word, that we will be an inspiration as well as a great, good influence on the lives of other people. Thank you, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me another amen. amen. God bless you. As we come to the word of God today, if you are not very familiar with the word of God, or if you are being blindfolded by the spirit of the age, when the word of God comes, you are like to have, to have an attitude that the children of Israel had many, many years before this time. These were the people of God that the Lord had called. And the Lord had made it very clear, very plain to them, the standard of heaven and the requirement of the word of God. In fact, this area of the world had been revealed to them from the very beginning and from the very foundation of that nation, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And then eventually prophets came, leaders came, preachers came, and revealed the same thing unto them, and broadened it, and deepened it, and explained it very well to them. But the children of Israel came to the point in their lives that those things became strange in their ears. And then we come to the New Testament. And when the word of God came to the people, unfortunately, some of them said, we have seen strange things today. We have heard strange things today. Because they did not allow the Lord himself, the God of heaven and earth, the Lord himself, the creator and the redeemer, the Lord himself, our perfect example, and the great teacher as well as savior, to reveal his very mind unto them. Look at Hosea chapter 8 verse 12. Hosea Chapter 8, verse 12. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. The Lord spoke to the children of Israel. He raised up leaders, preachers, prophets for them. And he revealed to them his very mind, his desires his heart. He revealed to them the standard of his word. Unfortunately, they were so far removed from the way of the Lord that they counted those things as strange things. Proverbs chapter 22. In Proverbs chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 20. 
have not I reaching to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Here the Lord was asking the children of Israel, What I gave you, what I wrote to you, what I spoke to you from the prophets and the leaders I restored. Have not I reaching unto thee excellent things in counsels and in knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that sent unto thee. The Lord was telling the children of Israel, the things I wrote to you, and the things I said to you, and the things I revealed to you, I revealed excellent words, and the words of truth. And it's so that you will take it in your life. Not only that, you'll pass it on to the coming generation, the people that come to ask from you what you have learned and what the Lord requires. And it's one of those things we're looking at today. One of the deep revelations of God that you do not hear in many places, you do not read in many books, and you do not have from many preachers. I'm talking to you today on the heavenly-minded Christian in this present evil world. To, hear, to even think that the present world in which we live is an evil world, is a dirty world, it's a defiled world to even think or to even suggest to the average man on the street that this present world is evil, is strange to their ears. And then you know that the Christian is in the world, but is not of the world. And that is to be totally different, distinct, distinguished, separate from the people of the world. For them, it's a strange thing. And yet, this is the excellent word. This is the word the Lord himself has revealed. That the Christian, though in the world, will not live, will not act, will not behave, will not appear, will not dress, will not do anything like the people of the world. He is to be heavenly minded. The heavenly minded Christian in this present evil world. In Galatians chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verses 3 and 4. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 4. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father. Those two verses talking about the grace of God, and the peace of God coming from the Father, and coming from the sun, and coming down unto us, changing us, transforming us, renewing us, making us different from the world around us. And he said, Christ gave himself for our sins, and for the purpose that he might deliver us from this present evil world, that is, he rescues us. It's looking at the world like a dirty well. And everybody sucking in the dirty, poisonous water in the well. And then here comes a hand from heaven. And it's because of the grace of God. And because of the love of God, he reaches down into that dirty well of the world. And he rescues us. And he lifts us up. And he separates us. 
and he removes us from that dead sheep water in the world. He gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. What's the will of God? That we'll be saved. What's the will of God? That we'll be rescued, pulled out of the dirty well, poisonous water in the well of the evil world. And that's why you need to understand, when you come to Christ, when you are born again, the Lord changes you, turns your mind, turns your heart, transforms you, converts you. And then you begin to see the world in its real right perspective. That it's dirty. It's evil. It's deadly. And if you are saved, if you are born again, you are delivered out of that evil world. In James chapter 1 verse 27. James 1, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted, undefiled, unstained from the world. It's still telling us that the nearer you get to the world, the more unqualified you are for heaven. Because when you come to the Lord, for you to be able to get to heaven, He calls you out of the dirty world, out of the evil world. And then He says, You must not have the you must now have the grace of God in your life, so that you are kept by the power of the Lord. From the dirty, evil world, and your mind, and your heart, and your desires, and your aspirations, and your ambitions, your affections, and not for the things of the world anymore. You become heavenly minded. In Colossians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. It says, you are saved. The evidence of that, you are, be, you are dead with Christ. You are buried with Christ. And you rise with Christ. And because you have risen with Christ, your attention now, your affection now, your ambition now, your desires, your aspirations now, shall be set on things above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. How do you know whether you are heavenly minded or earthly minded? Where your heart is. That's where your treasure will be. What interests you? What attracts you? What delights you? What makes you happy? What makes you joyful? Are there things above or things on the earth? Are there things mundane or things spiritual? Are there things carnal or things related to Christ-like living? If you are risen with Christ, you're seeking those things above, not things on the earth, where Christ is seated. And you set your affection, you set your mind, you set your love, you set your, the direction of your life on things above, not on things here below on the earth. Because after all, you are dead with Christ. And your life is seed now with Christ in God. And the things that interest God, the things that God approves of, 
The things that glorifies God, honors God, those are the things on which your heart is now set. A true Bible Christian is a converted man, a converted woman, a transformed person. Living on earth, he is heavenly minded. The world is evil through and through. And worldly people are evil and sinful in their heart and their lifestyle. But Christians are the children of God with Christ living within. We are heavenly minded. We are kept by the power of God from the pollutions of this present evil world. When you talk about the true Christian, there are three things that mark out a true Christian. Number one is called out of the world. Number two is cleansed by the blood of Christ. Number three is controlled by the Spirit of God. You're talking about a real believer. You're talking about a true believer. Number one is called out of the world. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out. Who has called you out. Who has called you out, out of darkness into his marvelous light. The number one thing that characterizes a real Christian, a true Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, a Christian that's on his way to heaven, that first thing is called out of the darkness in the world. Number two is cleansed by the blood of Christ. We're told in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7, 1 John, Chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us, washes us, purges us purifies us from all sin, no sin remaining. What then is the second thing that characterizes a real child of God, a true child of God, a Bible-believing child of God, is cleansed by the blood of Christ. Number three, is controlled by the Spirit of God. Called out of the world. Cleansed by the blood of Christ and then controlled by the Spirit of God. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, Romans chapter 8 verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led, directed, controlled, Taught, influenced by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How do you know a child of God? How do you know a real Christian? A person is not controlled by the flesh, but controlled by the Spirit. A person is not controlled by the world, but controlled by the Lord. A person who is not controlled by his sinful tendencies, but controlled by the scripture. A person who is not controlled by the spirit of the age, or the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, but a person that is controlled by the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, for as many as are led, directed, influenced, taught, controlled, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
those are the three things we're looking at as we divide the message to three parts. Number one, called out of the world to please God. Called out of the world to please God. Number two, cleansed from worldliness to promote godliness. Cleansed from worldliness to promote godliness. Number three, controlled by the Lord to propagate his glory. Controlled by the Lord to propagate his glory. I come to number 